Nathan, one of these trucks is not like the other, and that's because I'm standing next to the 2013 Toyota Tundra, and you are? Standing next to the 2014 Toyota Tundra. So which one should we take for a test drive? Gee, I wonder. <laughs> Coming up next on the fast lane truck, the brand new 2014 Tundra first drive review. Under the hood of the 2013 Toyota Tundra is a 5.7 liter V8 that puts out 381 horsepower and 401 pound foot of torque. Nathan, what's under the hood of the 2014 Tundra? Exactly the same thing. <laughs> That's right, the powertrains have not changed. What has changed is the design of the truck, as you can tell even by the hood. As you can tell, different hood design, different grille design, different headlights. Actually, externally, a lot of panels have changed as well. It's a very different looking truck from the outside. The interior of the old 2013 Tundra was, well, let's call it very workmanlike. There were big controls that worked when you had gloves on. Um, there was a very kind of honest feel to it, but it wasn't luxurious and it certainly wasn't premium and that's really where they've changed the new look well let me let Nathan explain that very different over here with the brand new 2014 Toyota Tundra and I'm gonna tell you why because someone finally said you know what I actually want something that looks a little bit more like a Camry that's not a put down the interior in this vehicle is tighter the controls are slightly more sophisticated looking and the bottom line is it looks like a more comfortable vehicle so far my tushy likes the seats too The electrical hookup currently down here, but it's just moved, and I'll show you where. Voila, Toyota's moved it up here. Much more convenient and much safer because it's not down where it can be damaged when you're going off-road. So if you're towing, Nathan, that's a better place for it? It is a better place for it. Look at that. Da-da and da-da. And they removed the adapter, right? Yeah, that's right. It's no longer necessary. Now, you know, people out there, especially fans of other brands, are going to be saying Ram has... Uh, Air suspension, Ram has a diesel, Ford has a twin turbo uh, V6, uh, uh, Sierra just introduced and GM just introduced uh, a V8 that actually can run on four cylinders for better fuel economy, and yet you guys are sticking with the same old powertrain. I mean, what's the competitive advantage to staying with something that's been around that long? So the, there's a saying that goes back, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Fair enough. Um, and, and again, speaking with our, with our current owners, they love our powertrain. Um, you know, from hauling upwards of 2,000 pounds to towing upwards of 10,000 pounds, um, the current powertrain really addresses all the needs that our current buyers um, really have, it, not only in their life, personal life, but work life, recreational life. Um, obviously, there's a lot of new things going on with the, the segment. Um, you know, and we're, we're certainly working uh, internally on, on bringing some new things to the segment as well. So are you saying uh, stay tuned? Is that what I'm hearing? Is there, is there some surprises under this hood at some point? You never know. All right, that's fair enough. The previous generation Tundra had these Bridgestones, which are decent, but they wanted something that did better in ice, snow, water conditions. So this new Michelin is actually specifically made for this vehicle. No other vehicle has it. It's not even available aftermarket. You know, if you're a Ford guy, you're a Ford guy, right? If you're a GM guy, you're a GM guy. And if now if you're a Tundra guy, you're a Tundra guy. Um, 
is this truck made in America? What percentage of parts of this pickup are actually local? So there's this truck, 75% of its content is US or Canadian based. North American. Uh, North American. Um, that North American, by definition, um, in terms of our labeling act, is U.S. and Canadian. Uh, it's assembled in San Antonio in Texas. Uh, it's a great plant to go to. A um, lot of great uh, local routes there in San Antonio. Um, and, you know, going to where all our parts are sourced, you know, our, our, our transmissions, our engines, all of them coming from the U.S. I could see the Ram guys out there and gals <laughs> and the Ford guys and gals writing furiously. What do you mean? The, the Tundra is the most North American vehicle of all of them? Is that what you're saying? Right now, no other full-size pickup has more content than us. The one small disappointment I have, Nathan, is that this is a cosmetic remake. It's not really... Uh, change substantially. They have the same powertrains, the same horsepower, and they're still missing the essentials for towing, like an integrated uh, brake controller for the trailer, which is essential if you've got a load you're towing. Absolutely true. And here's the crazy part. We drove basically this truck, but the older version, and it did great towing. It is a fantastic vehicle, but Without that integrated brake control, you are throwing the bone to the other guys that have it standard. Exactly, and they all pretty much have it standard. The other thing that's unusual is they still don't have a spray and bed liner. They have the plastic one, and that's got some issues of its own. I'd like to see a spray in one. I think a lot of consumers have gotten used to that. And it's these kinds of things that speak to you know, the DNA of a truck. When you're off-road, there's not a lockable differential, which would be nice as well. Uh, the new 4Runner has it for some reason. They didn't think that the Tundra needed it. And the reason why is because the system they're using is based on the ABS, breaking the individual wheel that's losing traction and then allowing the power to go to the wheel that has traction. In theory, it works. It's basically like an all-wheel drive system, but basically we're talking about open diffs front and rear. And frankly speaking, they should have an option where you can get a mechanical locking or electronic locking rear diff. Especially on this version, which is a TRD off-road package, right? You're saying we're a serious off-road vehicle, but yet we don't have something that's very basic and standard in off-road use. That's correct. And we did take one of these off-road. It did really well, but you know what? There's a lot more potential there. Yeah. And I think Toyota's aware of this. You know, we had dinner yesterday with one of the big kahunas at Toyota, and we said, what about the diesel engine? What about the fact that Ram now has air suspension? I mean, what about the fact that GM has come back and redesigned their engines, not just the truck and they have cylinder deactivation and I think they know this I think that Toyota has a sense that they're only halfway there to what they need to be today to have a successful and competitive truck now Chris we seem to be getting into some pretty massive truck wars right you've got a new Ram out you've got a new uh, Tundra out you've got a new Silverado out there's gonna be a new Titan there's probably gonna be well everything f-150 new mm -hmm. so um, you know, what have you brought to the table to, to win over uh, customers and potential buyers? So I think the, the exterior interior all new. Mm -hmm. I think that's those are definitely some key selling points. I think the tried and proven and tested powertrain um, really speak for themselves. I think what Toyota brings as a brand or QDR, quality, dependability, and reliability, um, really speak for itself. Um, and speaking with you know our current owners and those that are really interested in us, um, they highlight a lot of those key features and a lot of those items really go um, above and beyond when, when looking at other competitive manufacturers. Woohoo, I get to drive it now, Nathan. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, comfy. Bigger seats. Bigger seats, I like it, it's comfortable. You know, in terms of competition, Tundra's fourth. Ford's first, GM is second, Ram, and then uh, Tundra comes in at fourth. And that's because they don't have a full line of trucks. They have the Tundra and they have the Tacoma, and combined, and they'll tell you that number because it's better, they represent 18% of the pickup market. But yeah. that's with the Tacoma owning 64% of the mid-sized truck market. And that's gonna change soon because people are finally bringing back small trucks, woohoo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, we love small trucks. Actually, we love all trucks. We love all trucks. You know, um, I've got a confession, dude. Huh? I forgot to bring the Solo DL. Oh, crap. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's, uh, you want, you want to just have our viewers just guess? What yeah, it is? you did that last yeah, time. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Wow, yeah, sorry, guys. Um, but here, here's the thing. We're actually higher up here. We're over 6,000 feet, 6,400 feet. I just checked. And we will do a proper 0 to 60 using the Solo DL when we get our hands on this bad boy in Colorado, but for now, just for fun, yeah. uh, let's put the camera right on 
the speedometer. We've got a straight road ahead of us. We've got nobody behind us. It's safe. And let's just accelerate to 60. And you guys time it, and you will know how fast this goes from 0 to 60. Groovy. All right, my man, there's two of us in here. We've got the air conditioner on. <laughs> so what the hell is missing? I'm going to put it in sport mode, and I'm just going to floor it. And you guys can see how fast it will do from 0 to 60. Get your clock, stopwatches, iPhones ready. Here we go. Give it a little bit of uh, power. And there we go. Woohoo! Hey, it's got some snap. Sounds pretty good. Yo, and there's 60, my man. How long do you think that was? Take a guess. I'm going to say about 11 seconds. I'm going to say it was less than that. At home, viewers, participate and let us know in the comments, please. <laughs> We're so professional, Nathan. This is so ad hoc, it's ridiculous. But we will let you know what the proper time is when we get our hands on it in Colorado. <laughs> I can't wait. Nathan, now, of course, a huge part of pickups is the sound they make. <laughs> These uh, 5.7 liter V8s are great. So shall we see if it sounds any different? I don't think it's gonna sound that much different, but let's give it a try. Give it a try. Oh, it sounds good, Nathan. Yeah, yeah, it sounds okay. The new 2014 Tundra, Nathan, starts at about $26,000 plus destination taxes and goes all the way up to just over 47,000 if you get the 1794 edition. And by the way, if you're curious, that's the year, the ranch, where now the current Toyota plant is, was first founded, bought, whatever, in Texas, in San Antonio. That's where they get the 1794 number. That is correct, folks. And so, if you think about it, it has a lot of Texas history in it, or at least that's what they tell us. Yeah, they don't sell this anywhere else. Nope, nowhere else. It doesn't go overseas. It doesn't go to Egypt or any, uh, you know, Middle East, nothing. Yeah, which is crazy because every other Toyota vehicle is sold around the world, not this one. This is just for us. Aren't we special? We're special. Now, one of the first things I noticed immediately is just how quiet it is. Yeah, and we're in the SR5. I mean, really, it's just above the base model, and it's really quiet on the road. There are five trims. Yes. And uh, two of them are kind of confusing because there's a 1794 and there's a Platinum Edition. Mm -hmm. Which one's the upper end? They're both up there, I think that the 1794 is a little bit more like the King Ranch would be for, say, the Ford, because it's got a little bit more country western thing going on. That's my guess. That's what it looks like. Uh, but it starts at the bottom. I mean, SR, SR5, then you get the Limited, and then you got those two top dogs. And those guys, by the way, both price about the same. Yeah, and they come with 20-inch wheels, nicer interior. Um, what we're seeing, especially coming out of the, the economic situation that's hampered the U.S. recently, is there's a lot of full-size pickup buyers and intenders out there um, that are really interested in what's in the marketplace because it's been so long since they've actively been looking for a new truck. Uh, and we, we think with the, the launching of this new Tundra um, really puts us in a great position to be in front of those buyers, whether they're Toyota, whether they're oh, you know, one of the D3 or, or anyone else, or maybe even new to full-size pickup. Uh, we think the new product puts us in a great position. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but basically you're saying, for instance, in Texas, this is a family truckster, right? This is what families use to have as their main vehicle. And for those people, when you have a pickup that is more comfortable, has a nicer interior, that's the selling point that they're looking for. What's well, one of the selling points? Yeah. What we're finding in speaking with our consumers and full-size pickup buyers is a, is a full-size pickup is not just a traditional full-size pickup that's mm. used only for work. Um, there's a lot of people that understand that a full-size pickup brings that aspect of it, but brings the aspect of the interior. Right? A lot of, you see a lot of uh, full-size pickups upping their game on the interior. It can't only be a work truck that tows and hauls and you know, goes to the job site. It's got to be able to do much more than that. And I think that's where the interior, the family, uh, being comfortable really comes into play because it's got to be more than just one thing. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you for I, I appreciate it. All right, Nathan, so we have a pickup that is newer yep. in uh, every cosmetic way possible. Yeah, that's right. It's a uh, much cleaner, beefier, manlier design. And uh, it's more modern, right? There is a sense of it being more car-like inside. It's also a little bit more, well, premium. Yeah, it does feel like it's slightly upmarket from where it was. Now, of course, we want to tow with this one up the I Gauntlet, so we requested it from Toyota, but that's really out of our hands, and we have to wait for them to supply the truck. That's right. Please, Toyota. 
quickly. Bring us the truck so we can take it up the Ike Gauntlet. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Saying thanks for watching, and we will give it a full TFL truck test when? When we get it up in Colorado. See you next time. Ciao.